Um, without further ado, we will start off with um, Mesmur by our sister Beilu Kasai from Manan Alam, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Beilu. <laughs> She to the sermon, which again is going to be by Abu Ashi Taklebrahanta Masulo from St. Mary Columbus, Ohio. In the name of the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If it's afternoon, where you are, or California area, good afternoon. In the east, good evening. Um, welcome to the uh, great fast of the Lent of in the fast of Lent. Uh, today, as we uh, start this program. I like to take this moment to say thank you to Eritom for arranging such 
a wonderful program um, in their busy schedule uh, for us to benefit from uh, no matter where we are that we can come up into this uh, program and uh, learn and uh, benefit uh, at least we can get some type of meaningful um, basic lessons of uh, the Sunday or the or, or the week that follows the Sunday. Um, so keep up the good work. Uh, keep up the good work and make that make that bless you uh, with what you are doing. And uh, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share um, that is word with you. Um, as scheduled today, we'll be learning the word. Um, of course, that is word, but we will, uh, based on the time we have, we'll learn some some basic things about the Orada. Um, the Orada is a good word used to name the Sunday that falls the eve of the Great Lent. Or the first week of the fast is called the Orada. Meaning, starting from today, this Sunday, until next Saturday, it's called the Orada. And then next Sunday, that's gonna, you know, that Sunday is called Kiddust, and following the entire week, it's called the week of Kiddust. Um, in our church, the reading of the gospel, the lit liturgical service, the prayers and the hymn are all arranged based on the calendar of the year. Keep in mind, each day is also known by a saint or saints whose uh, mostly their departure is commemorated, but sometimes also they are burned. <laughs> Therefore, each of the eight Sundays of the Great Lent has its own name. The first Sunday is called the Warade, second, this third, Mukrat, fourth, Mazago, uh, the fifth, Degazate, Gabriel, Nick. The word is the name given in remembrance to the incarnation of the Son of God. The literal meaning of the word is um, he came down, or the one that came down, or he that came down from heaven, according to um, the gospel by St. John the, the Evangelist. Um, which is cited in um, John chapter 3, verse 13. Who is that? Who is this that is called the one that came down? The second person of the Holy Trinity, the only begotten Son of the Father, came down to save humanity from condemnation. Came down from heaven, born of the Virgin Mary. He assumed our human, lowly, our lowly human nature. He came to teach us, to show us the path of righteousness. The Son of God became the Son of Man to restore us. As stated in the Nicene Creed, for as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. So when we say the Werade or the Werade in English, he came down, or 
uh, according to the gospel, uh, he that came down from heaven is our Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue from this Sunday until uh, this coming Saturday, we discuss God's love, we discuss um, our fallen nature, we discuss um, the purpose of our creation, we discuss uh, the separation of humanity from God, in the journey of God to uh, bring uh, to bring back humanity or to restore back humanity to the original state. Um, when we say the Werade, we um, we learn about God's mercy, about God's um, journey to towards humanity. Um, the conversation of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ with Nicodemus affirms to this to this name to the to the name the word. No man has ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man who is in heaven. John chapter 3, verse 13. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man who is in heaven. After after discussing this, the, the word uh, in short version, uh, why did our Lord Jesus Christ fast? The Lord Jesus Christ fasted according to the tradition of the Old Testament. He fasted according to the uh, norm of, uh, uh, according to the uh, uh, Scripture in Old Testament. Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights before receiving the Ten Commandments. Elijah fasted 40 days and 40 nights before he was taken up to the uh, land of the living. Um... The Lord fasted to teach us that the beginning of service is fasting. I wonder how many of us start our service with fasting. I wonder how many of us ask the Lord for direction through fasting. When you are being challenged in life, When you, are, when you have challenges to choose between certain things that you uh, face in life, the we fast. Fasting helps us to, to seek God's, God's guidance. When we fast, God also lead us into the direction that He wants us to go. Um, Daniel fasted with his friends, and they were the one um, that that they that that, that they uh, who were chosen or were better than the rest of the um, people or uh, 
the, uh, the one that were eating from the food of the king. We find Daniel through fasting changing the nature of lions who devour humans, but in the sight of, in the presence of Daniel, they were changed into sheep. So fasting is instrumental in our spiritual birth. The Lord fasted uh, according to the prophets. The prophets fasted uh, Moses, Elijah, and So, how do we fast? How do we fast? The Bible gives us a clear direction on how we are to fast. Our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew six seventeen tells us when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. What does it mean to anoint your head? What does it mean to wash your face? Anointing is, according to a translation from the Holy Fathers, anointing is uh, love, to have love, love of neighbor, love of God. God is love and love of a name. Anointing is also your good deeds. So we are to anoint our service when we are fasting to do good things. When we are fasting to love our brothers and sisters. To love our God. Not for the sake of order that we fast, but we fast for the sake of His love. Our Lord Jesus Christ also mentioned it, saying, wash your face. What does it mean? Is it water? No. It is not what. Wash your face. It is to wash our face with the tears of repentance. This time, we are to power our tears for our sin, for the for the day-to-day sin we can commit, for for being a stumbling block to our brothers and sisters, we are to cry for the sake of our church. We are to cry for the sake of our parents, our brothers and sisters. We are to cry for the for the uh, for the world that is going down the hill, Saint John Chrysostom, on the proof of fasting, he asks us, saying, "Do you fast?" and he answers the question himself also. Do you fast? Give me proof of it by your works. If you see a poor man, take it you on him. If you see a friend being honored, do not envy him. Do not let only your mouth fat, but also the eye and the ear and the feet and the hands, 
all the members of our body. Let the hand start by being free of various. Let the feet fast by seizing, seizing to one after sin. Let the eyes fast by disciplining the not to lay at, at that which is sinful. Let the ear fast by not listening to evil talk and gossip. Let the mouth fast from all, all words and unjust criticism. For what good is it is for what good is, is it if we have seen from birds and fishes but bite and devour our brothers and sisters may he who came to the world to save sinners strengthen us complete the fast with humility Have mercy on us and save us as his closing comment. This is similar to Saint Laret, the Heine, uh, or the um, uh, in his hymn, instructed as saying. Let the eyes fast from looking into evil things. Let the ears fast from listening to evil things. And let the mouth fast from saying evil things. Let all our, all our senses be uh, fast. Not only from food, but also our senses. Because our senses are the gateway to the world. They are doors and windows um, to see. Our teacher, St. Paul, beseech us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. So in this fast, we are to abstain from food, but at the same time, we are to be abstained from sin. We are to do our prayers and also um, if you have not been doing your sick death, frustration, you need to do that as well. We all need to do that. Satan does not like people, or, um, uh, does not like when we do prostration. Prayer is good, but must be accompanied to death. It is time for us to present our body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. May God help us to do so. Thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity. May He help us to complete this fasting season uh, successfully and uh, get us to the uh, Hosanna and uh, Resurrection. That is best. <coughs> Amen. God bless you, Samana. May we hear the word of life. Thank you, Father Takalibarhan, for your amazing sermon. And now let's move on to the question and answer session. Right. It it has to do with the um the gospel reading for today. For Zawara. Uh huh. Yes. It was uh, John chapter three verse thirteen. Uh-huh. And uh, the verse says, and it was uh, Christ speaking to Nicodemus, and he okay. said, and no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man who is in heaven. 
Mm-hmm. And I was, I was kind of wondering uh, what, what that meant exactly. Okay. Um, well, when we say ascended, um, there is... Uh, God is everywhere. God is in heaven. God is on earth. God, there is no place, there is no space where... There is no God. God is all in all. But uh, the gospel says ascended. Though it says ascended, he never left his throne. Um, in the uh, in the um, Lydat, uh, we the angels um, they came to Bethlehem, they found him there in the manger. And then they went up into Sarhariam, and they found him there at the right hand of his father. And they started praising him, saying, his new praise, saying, Sarhat le'diyavihir besameh wa salam ba'nidr sindratul asad. So, he was in heaven at the same time he was in the manger. To go back to your question, um, the word is also a, a language of humility to show that he humbled himself uh, to the level of um, a servant. Okay. Uh, but he never left his throne. But that's why he said, uh, no one ascended to heaven, but the one who, who came from heaven, also who is in heaven. So when we say ascended, he never left his place. But at the same time, he was in the manger. He he was he he um, he took he assumed our human nature. But he was still while he was in the womb, he was Alam bumulu entai gobrani. Yaarred you must see uh, summer, winter, the seasons. They were following their course, so he was in control. There was no time that uh, uh, in other words, he is not limited. Uh, we cannot say he is here. He is not there. It is not something that we can call him. Uh, the language is written in a way we... Looks like we're out of time. But if you still have a question that wasn't answered, feel free to DM us on all of our social media platforms. Thank you so much. Uh, and if you can conclude with prayer for us.